Hello everyone! Welcome to Teacher Hansi's channel. For today's tutorial, we will solve Adigan equations. First, what is radical equation? Remember that a radical equation is an equation that contains radical terms with variables in the radical. So let us have the following examples. I have square root of x is equal to 7. So we have here an equation in which in radicals, the radical is equal to a variable. Next, we have cube root of x plus 2 is equal to 3. So again, we have variables in our radical symbol. That's why this one is an example of radical equation. Another example, the square root of 2x minus 3 is equal to the square root of x plus 5. Next, we have square root of 2a minus 5 plus 10 is equal to 0. Again, these two are equations in which equal sign is visible and the radicands contains a variables. Last example, I have fourth root of 2b minus 4 is equal to b minus 1. So these are all examples of radical equation. So in solving radical equation, we can use the property of equality in which if two numbers are equal, thus when raising both sides of an equation to an even power, then they are still equal. In symbol, we have if x is equal to y, then x raised to n is equal to y raised to n. So how to solve the radical equation? So to solve the radical equation, we must arrange the term of the equation so that one term with radical is by itself on one side of the equation. Second, we will square both sides of the radical equation in order for us to remove the radical sign. Next, we will combine the like terms and solve for the variable. So last, let us check apparent solution in the original equation. So let us now begin. Let us solve each of the following radical equation, then check. Number 1, the square root of x is equal to 6. No need to arrange this one since the radicals is already written at the other side of the equation itself. So from here, let us raise both sides by 2. We have square root of x raised to 2 is equal to 6 squared. Apply the row of radicals, if the index and the exponents are equal, then we will simply consider the radicand. Therefore, we have x is equal to 36 in which 6 squared is equal to 36. Therefore, this will be the solution for square root of x is equal to 6. Now, let us check if 36 satisfies the equation. Therefore, let us do the checking. Using x is equal to 36, let us use the original equation in which x will be substituted by 36. Therefore, we have the square root of 36 is equal to 6. And the square root of 36 is equal to 6 as well. Therefore, 6 is equal to 6. Since 36 satisfies our condition, then the solution for the square root of x is equal to 6 is 36. Next, another example. The square root of x plus 2 is equal to 3. So again, we don't need to arrange this one since the radicals is already written at the other side of our equation. Let us simply raise both sides by 2. Therefore, square root of x plus 2 raised to 2 is equal to 3 squared. From our law of radicals, if our index and exponent are equal, then the answer for this one will be the radicand itself. Therefore, we have x plus 2 is equal to 9, in which 9 came from 3 squared. Now, let us use the addition property of equality in which we will add negative the both sides in order to isolate x here or simply transpose positive 2 to the right side. Therefore, we have 
x is equal to 9 minus 2. Again, from positive, it becomes negative. And 9 minus 2 is equal to 7. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 7. Let us check first if this satisfies the condition for our radical equation. Using x is equal to 7, let us substitute it of the original equation is square root of x plus 2 is equal to 3. Therefore, we have the square root of 7 plus 2 is equal to 3. 7 plus 2 is equal to 9. Therefore, we have the square root of 9 is equal to 3. And the square root of 9 is equal to 3. Therefore, we have 3 is equal to 3, which is correct. Therefore, 7 here satisfies the equation is square root of x plus 2 is equal to 3. Then, the solution set is 7. Another example is number 3. Square root of 2x minus 3 minus 5 is equal to 0. If you notice, our radical here contains a constant. Therefore, let us isolate the radicals and put the constant to the right side of our equation. Therefore, we will have the square root of 2x minus 3 is equal to 5. I simply transpose negative 5 to the other side. From negative, it becomes positive. Now that the radical is on the other side of the equation, let us now raise both sides by 2. Therefore, we have the square root of 2x minus 3 raised to 2 is equal to 5 squared. So again, we have here index equal to the exponent, then our answer for this one will be 2x minus 3, which is equal to 25 from 5 squared. Next, let us isolate 2x here by transposing negative 3 to the right side of our equation. So we will have 2x is equal to 25 plus 3. We can also use the addition property of equality, in which we will add both sides to positive so from here, let us add 25 plus 3, so we have 28. Our equation will be 2x is equal to 28. To isolate x here, let us divide both sides by the coefficients of x, or let us divide both sides by 2. And 28 divided by 2 is equal to 14. Therefore, the value of x is equal to 14. So again, in our case, let us check if 14 satisfies our equation. Using x is equal to 14, let us use the original equation, the square root of 2x minus 3 minus 5 is equal to 0. Therefore, we have the square root of 2 times 14. I simply substitute 14 to our x there, minus 3 minus 5. And 2 times 14 is equal to 28 minus 3. 28 minus 3 is equal to the square root of 25 minus 5, it should be equal to 0. And square root of 5 is equal to 5. Therefore, we have 5 minus 5 is equal to 0, which is true. Therefore, 14 satisfies the equation square root of 2x minus 3 minus 5 equal to 0. Then the solution set for this one is 14. Another example, I have here square root of 4x plus 3 is equal to square root of 3x plus 4. Since the radicals are written to the both sides of our equation, let it be. Let us simply raise both sides by 2. So from here, the answer will be 4x plus 3 is equal to 3x plus 4. You notice, I simply get the radicands since the index and their x are equal. Let us now combine the like terms by transposing 3x to the left side of our equation and positive 3 to the right side of our equation. Therefore, we will have 4x minus 3x from here is equal to 4 minus 3 from here. And, and 4x minus 3x is equal to x, which is equal to 1 because 4 minus 3 is equal to so from here, the value of x is equal to 1. Let us check if x is equal to 1 using the original equation square root of 4x plus 3 
is equal to square root of 3x plus 4. Let us substitute 1 to our x's here. Therefore, we will have square root of 4 times 1 plus 3 is equal to 3 times 1 plus 4. And 4 times 1 plus 3 is equal to square root of 7. While 3 times 1 plus 4 is also equal to square root of 7. Since 1 satisfies our equation, then the solution set for square root of 4x plus 3 is equal to square root of 3x plus 4 is equal to 1. So that is how we solve a radical equation. However, the given property of equality is not always true for some cases. When solving a radical equation, it is also possible to have some extra solution that will not satisfy the original equation. And such solution is called an extraneous root. Therefore, it is a must to check the answer to the original equation. Let us have this example. The square root of x is equal to x minus 6. So since the radical here is isolated, to the left side of our equation, then let us simply raise both sides by 2. Therefore, we will have square root of x raised to 2 is equal to the square root of x minus 6. So from here, since the index and exponents are equal, then the answer for this one will be x, which is equal to the square root of x minus 6. And at the right side, since it says that it is the square root of x minus 6, we can simply use the point method or use the special product of polynomials, which is the square of polynomial. So from using special product or the point method, I will obtain x squared minus 12x plus 36 from x minus 6 times x minus 6. From here, let us now combine the like terms. Let us transpose x to the right side of our equation. Therefore, we will have 0 is equal to x squared minus 12x minus x from here plus 36. And this one is the same with x squared minus 13x plus 36 is equal to 0. Let us find the factors of x squared minus 13x plus 36 in order for us to find the value of x. And the factors for this one will be quantity x minus 9, times quantity x minus 4. From our factors, we can now say that the value of x is equal to 9 and 4. Let us now check if 9 and 4 satisfies our original equation. So let us check first if x is equal to 9. From our original equation, square root of x is equal to x minus 6. Let us substitute 9 to our x is here. Therefore, we have Square root of 9 is equal to 9 minus 6. And square root of 9 is equal to 3. Well, 9 minus 6 is equal to 3. Therefore, 9 is a solution of the equation square root of x is equal to x minus 6. Let us now check if x is equal to 4. From the original equation, let us substitute 4 to the excess there. Therefore, we have square root of 4 is equal to 4 minus 6. And the square root of 4 is equal to 2, while 4 minus 6 is equal to negative 2. So from here, they are not equal. Therefore, it is called an extraneous rule. Remember that the extraneous rule does not satisfy the original equation. Therefore, it is really a must to check the solution. So let us have another example. We have 4 plus square root of x minus 2 is equal to X. Let us isolate the radicals here by transposing the constant to the right side of our equation. Therefore, we have the square root of x minus 2 is equal to x minus 4. Let us now raise both sides by 2. Therefore, we have square root of x minus 2 raised to 2 is equal to x minus 4 raised to 2. And this equation is equal to x minus 2 which is equal to the quantity x minus 4 times x minus 4. So again, you may use the special product of square of binomial or use the point method to evaluate the right side. Therefore, using either of the two, this one is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 16. Therefore, I have now x minus 2 
is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 16. From here, let us now combine the like terms. We will have 0 is equal to x squared minus 8x minus x, in which I transpose x from the left side to our right side, plus 16 plus 2. Again, I simply transpose negative 2 to the right side. That's why it becomes positive 2. Let us add and subtract. We have x squared minus 9x from here plus 18 from here. So the same with what we did in our first example, we will simply find the factors of this expression and that will be equal to x minus 6 times x minus 3. Now, the value of our x is equal to 6 and 3. Let us now check if 6 and 3 satisfies the original equation. Let's start with if x is equal to 6. Using 4 plus square root of x minus 2 is equal to x. Let us substitute 6 here to the excess here. Therefore, we have 4 plus square root of 6 minus 2 is equal to 6. And 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. Therefore, we have 4 plus square root of 4 is equal to 6. The square root of 4 is equal to 2. Therefore, 4 plus 2 is equal to 6, which is also equal to 6. Then, 6 here is the solution of our original equation. Let us now check if x is equal to b. Again, using the original equation, let us substitute 3 to the excess there. So, we have 4 plus square root of 3 minus 2 is equal to 3. And 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. Therefore, we have 4 plus square root of 1 is equal to 3. And square root of 1 is equal to 1. Therefore, 4 plus 1 is equal to 5, which is not equal to 3. Therefore, the solution 3 is an extraneous root since it does not satisfy our original equation. So that is how we solve radical equations. So again, we need to arrange the terms of the equation so that one term with the radical is by itself to one side of the equation. Square the both sides, combine the like terms, solve for the variable, and check apparent solutions in the original equations. Again, if one solution does not satisfy the original equation, then it is called an extraneous group. So that's it for our video. Thank you for watching. See you again in my next video. Bye!